Hi everybody, this is Scott Dudley from SaaS Startup Stories and today my special guest is John Norton who's based in Brisbane, Australia. And John is the CEO at Go Contractor, which was built to help construction general contractors move their worker onboarding and subcontractor safety management online. Welcome to the show, John. You're ready to rock and roll. Awesome, Scott. Yeah, excited to be here and uh, thank you for having me on. Let's You're welcome. Yeah, it's great to speak to someone in Australia. You're over the uh, East Coast, I'm on the West Coast. So um, it's good to see, especially an Aussie SaaS company as well. All right, so um, let's start off with your background and sort of what initially got you into the SaaS space. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm originally Irish, Scott, and sort of have worked uh, all over the world, I guess. Um, worked around Asia Pacific for quite a long time down here in Australia. So I was originally Irish citizen, became a, an Australian citizen. Then I ah. emigrated to the US for the last several years, actually. And then uh, due to the pandemic, sort of found my way with family back to Australia. So I'm running things from down here at the moment. So yeah, we've got a, a global global software business, which um, is interesting. Uh, managing time zones is a lot of fun, which I think any any uh, peers that we have out there would would recognize when they're trying to expand and go global with with the SaaS company, which is you know it's always the thing, right? You you start off, you kind of hit the walls of your immediate market pretty quickly if things are going well and then you need to look globally. So um, good challenges yeah. to have uh, for sure. Um, for me, I've been in the construction space and construction technology specifically for about 15 years. And so, yeah, just really passionate about, you know, the ability for technology to transform the industry, to make people's lives better in the industry. And, and really what we focus on a go contractor is making workers safer you know, in a preemptive sort of planned way to make it possible to raise the safety bar um, for everybody. And uh, that's sort of, it's not always a given, uh, pretty pretty dangerous industry to work in for the most part. I think in Australia and the UK are probably two of the markets that lead um, that space and, and are using process improvements and technology to raise the game. It's not the same everywhere else. So there's big opportunity um, from a business sense, but also from a, a mission sense to to make the industry safer uh, it's a great space to be in okay just curious is there a lot of competition in that space because i wouldn't have thought the construction and SaaS sort of go together too often um what would you say there's heaps of startups yeah there's there's lots of startups uh oh, okay. in the in the construction space um you know varying stages obviously i think uh Australia is a really good starting starting ground for a lot of them. Um, some of those come out of mining. There's a lot of similarities between, you know, the requirements for productivity tools, efficiency, safety, um, you know, both the site-based stuff and back office in mining that then flows into uh, construction um, from little software widgets right to, to fully autonomous machines, if you take that breadth of technology. And a lot of that then makes its way into the construction space. Uh, so I think you know there there's there's good stats and reports out there on the you know VC investment into the construction space really being at that tipping point where it's really starting to accelerate where there's been you know X billion dollars invested over the last three to five years that'll start growing much quicker now as you compare it to other verticals and how the sort of emergence of SaaS and, and therefore investment in that space has accelerated so super exciting time to be in SaaS in construction actually. And, you know, there's been pretty rapid adoption of software solutions in general in the space in the last couple of years. Um, and it's one of the biggest industries out there, you know, it's yeah. multi-trillion multi -trillion dollar industry, um, largely untapped, right? But I think, you know, the signs are really strong. You know, the majority of decent sized construction companies now have R&D and they have R&D budgets and they're, they're moving things forward so yeah it's it's great it's great space to be in yeah it's probably not so great though in sydney at the moment is it with the the lockdown down there with the band the uh the construction which is sort of interesting i wonder if that's going to take off in other uh areas around australia or yeah. the world i was surprised to see them do that yeah it's a good question i think with with delta rampant now they sort of probably didn't have any other option just but to lock things down for a couple of weeks. Um, so to give you context, right, I was in New York when the pandemic hit, 
yeah. everything was shut down there. Construction, not totally shut down, but it was for the most part down for quite some time. I also spent a good bit of time in Ireland through the pandemic as well. And construction was shut for months on end. Um, we actually uh, had a, have a really interesting solution and we were in a really pivotal spot in getting construction open again in Ireland. Oh, okay. So when everything shut down, we'd, we'd sort of gone to the Construction Industry Federation at the time and said, you know, hey, we've got a solution that's really relevant for you guys right now. It helps you to onboard workers remotely, pre-qualify them, train them, and then verify them all remotely when they get back on site. So the idea there was, hey, let's pre-train everybody around the protocols that are being developed around COVID so that you can have safe working sites and, you know, educate people on social distancing and mask wearing and, you know, getting to work, keeping distance, all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, that, that, that industry body in Ireland did a really great job creating the, con creating the protocols to start with, which was aligned with the health, health and safety executive in Ireland. And then we provided the tech to house that training program, which is basically a video. Um, so, so we turned what is a private platform meant for general contractors and main contractors to manage their contractor workforce um, through the platform into a open access public system. And we just made it all free. We said, you know, you can create your Scott, you can, you know, go to go to app.gocontractor.com, set up your profile for free. Uh, here's a link or an invitation code to do your COVID-19 training. And so they went through that got their certification and then showed up on site with a QR code ready to go. And we had some, some tech in the background there that proved that it was you that took that course through photos that were taken while you're taking the course. So okay. we, um, we, we, we're really proud to say that, and it's not a stretch to say that, you know, we saved the economy along with the CIF billions of dollars because we, you know, they were able to reopen construction before any other industry and get people back to work really quickly. So we had that turnaround and we onboarded um, 250,000 workers. So effectively oh, every construction worker in Ireland in a very okay. short space of time. Yeah. So that that story in itself is huge for us because we had to scale up our um, our technology from having, you know, five to 10,000 workers per week to having 80, 80 to 100,000 workers per week going through the platform. So we, wow. we did effect, effectively 10X our, our tech overnight. That's obviously a good problem to have then, isn't it? <laughs> a, great, a great problem to have, yeah. And it was, you know, yeah. it was something that was really part of a mission for us, which, you know, you don't always get that. And I know our CTO, Ronan O'Sullivan, was really proud as, as this being a really major point in his career that he was able to pull that off deliver it and something that was really valuable um for the community and it was really about it was about keeping people safe and i think construction in in general is um has been pretty safe through the pandemic to keep going just because of the the outdoor nature of it and the aerated spaces that you have for the most part um but I, you know if we you know if, if by some extension um, people, you know, there was even one person that didn't get a, a, an extreme um, reaction to COVID or didn't pick up COVID because of that program that was in place. We're, we're super proud of that. So, you know, it was really nice to be in the, the right place at the right time there. Excellent. Okay, so I know you weren't involved uh, when Go Contractor was started in the very beginning, but um, just sort of interested in your experience. Uh, if you have more experience with uh, borrowing VC money or, or bootstrapping, um, yeah. and how you sort of got various companies off the ground that you've started or worked with. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, our co-founders, Sean, Sean Fennell and Julie Kerr did a, just an amazing job setting the company up. So they've, they founded it in late 2012 and effectively they were working in the, um, onboarding space more for employees across various industries and various verticals. And so they kept running into the same issue around where you have contractors. So, you, you know, you don't have a direct relationship with this person that's coming on into your facility or onto your site. How do you manage that? Because the systems that were designed to manage an employed salaried workforce really don't work for that contingent, you know, um, chop and change, ever-changing, fast-moving, contingent workforce. Uh, and that's where, actually at the time it was Initiify. Initiify was born out of that. Um, that evolved, you know, through to effectively they, they launched in, in the States uh, around 2015 and set up an office in New York and started to pick up customers there. Um, 
typical startup story of trying lots of different verticals and then figuring out what works and, and where the right sweet spot is. And that's really been heavy industries for us or hard hat industries. And in particular, construction is our strongest segment. So we've doubled down on that. I came in as a sort of hired in CEO, really largely because of my experience in the construction tech space okay. and my knowledge of the US market. And yep. Being an Irish guy and it's an Irish founded company probably didn't hurt. And so, yeah, it's been really great to, to sort of come in two and a half years ago and then start to really get ready for a scaling event where the company was, you know, pretty privately funded, bootstrapped um, for the most part with some small VC investments in, in Ireland. Uh, and then end of last year, we, we, um, we got around together to do a Series A. Uh, at the end of 2020, launched it and um, announced it in January 2021. So that was sort of on the back of, you know, getting the underlying financials really solid, mm -hmm. having a pathway to profitability, actually, and really bringing in, you know, some really solid growth rates yep. based off. It was really based off the alignment of the of the business of saying, hey, we're a construction tech company ostensibly. Um, so let's line up our marketing, let's line up our tech, our product roadmap, our sales, you know, the entire company around being pivoted towards that. Because, you know, I think if you know your vertical really well, if you yep. are vertically focused, it, it improves everything, you know, in terms of how you're going to market, how you're setting up pricing, um, how you do licensing in general that really suits your customer as opposed to trying to impose your model for your business on those customers. And so that's uh, been an interesting journey for us, but one that's that's working quite well, I would say. Makes sense, yeah. All right, so let's go into a little bit of detail about the actual Go Contractor product, what exactly it provides to its users. Yeah, so I guess in a nutshell, it's, um, it's, a, it's a worker onboarding platform for, um, Construction mainly, we do we do play in other verticals, but it's essentially we sell our platform to a general contractor um, and they manage their subcontractor companies through the platform and they invite, they then invite workers to participate in those projects. So from the user end or for the worker end, mm. they get an invitation to our platform um, through email text where, you know, they can then go through the app or, or through a web browser to qualify for that job site. So it's basically saying, you know, the traditional way of doing it is a worker shows up on a construction site. They go, OK, let's go into the onboarding area and do your site induction or your site orientation. Right. And so fill out a bunch of paperwork, you know, get their IDs copied, provide proof of their trade or their, their safety qualifications and then receive a site induction, it's called in Australia and the UK, and, and site orientation in the US, which is okay. basically <laughs> alerting them to the dangers of the site. And that's usually, you know, a set of slides or something like that and a talk from a safety professional. So it's very involved, um, requires a lot of professionals to be around and people to run that process, but also quite haphazard in that people show up at different times, they've forgotten pieces of documentation, the safety guy's not around, so someone has to fill in and give this information. That's really critical to that person's safety and the, the safety of everybody else on that site to make sure that, you know, this worker is qualified to be there and they're compliant as to the site rules so they're, and yep. that they're reducing risk on site and that they're staying safe and keeping themselves safe. So the whole idea is that, you know, worker shows up on site, they go home safe uh, in mm -hmm. the evening. And so we've moved all of that online and it's done ahead of time, right? So it's not like the worker showing up and doing it online through an app. They've done it at home or at their office or wherever ahead okay. of time. So now, yeah. so now the main contractor can see a pipeline of workers coming to the job. So if they're like, you know, they've invited five subcontract companies, they've got to provide a bunch of workers. They can see if these guys don't have anyone prepared to, to get on the job. And that can be an issue. So this all affects schedule. It affects productivity right. on the job. So on Thursday, the site manager is on the phone to the subby saying, hey, you know, we've sent you the invitation. Looks like you haven't any workers pre-qualified. You're having any issues. Okay, where can we help you out or, or whatever, right? So that's kind of the really basic piece of what we do is um, capture a bunch of information, make it available on the platform, make it, make it possible for the contractors to manage that workforce and to keep mm. them safe and compliant and deliver that training. Um, and once they get to site, they can use us to check into site, um, to check out of site, to do things like checklists and a bunch of different kind of widgets and apps at the site level once they're on there. But the real key of what we do and what we, the value we provide is really to have that 
um, system of record of all of the labor that that is on that site um, and that you have peace of mind that they're all qualified to be there and should be there and that's a big deal for for construction businesses absolutely yeah okay very interesting so um just wondering do you have a like a product roadmap for the next 12 to 18 months we sure do would you like to hear about it <laughs> we uh Go for yeah it. scott yeah we've um yeah listen it's uh We've, we've got some really interesting opportunities because, you know, we have this system of record and, and we love to partner with other startups. And so when you asked that question a while ago, you know, is there, is there competition out there? We could more see them as, as they're all partnership potentials. Ah, okay. Yeah. There's, not, there's not a huge amount of direct competition in what we do, um, but there's huge potential to partner with other startups because the data that we provide can be used by any other downstream system or platform or app because you know what we have is all of the workers in a digital platform that you can communicate with or that you can send out requirements to or that you can validate by worker group by individual by whole site by whole company and that's really powerful so whether it's you know time and attendance for payments on the hr side of it or whether it's you know secure sites where they have access control gates it's about you know uh, reducing the manual, eliminating manual data entry, which always is a, yeah. is a weak point in any system and obviously slows it all down. So we, yes. we love integra integrating with everybody out there and, you know, players like Procore and Trimble were integrated with their systems on sites. So we're doing a bunch of stuff in that space just to make it easier um, around that integration. We've done a huge amount of work around usability on the platform from a user and an admin perspective, because for us, we have a bit of a unique position where um, we interact with every every worker or every person that steps foot on the job site. So it's both a great opportunity, but also a great responsibility to make that journey and that experience really seamless. Um, and that's, you know, we were able to prove that and we improved a, a huge number of things through the, the pandemic in Ireland with that program we rolled out that I referenced earlier, because it had to be super simple because it had to allow for someone who doesn't read um someone that speaks a completely you know a different language mm. and so through technology you have the ability to meet everybody on their own level and for them to learn at their own pace and to really provide a better experience and you know we're really proud of um we have a, a 97 percent satisfaction rating among workers which are really the key people Excellent. right admins and the company side uh, not quite as high as 97% because everyone wants different things. Yeah. Um, but the key, the key, <laughs> you can't please everybody. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but the key, the key piece for us and the priority for us um, is, is to create that usability to the degree where it's super simple for anyone to interact with. And, and we've gotten yeah. there on that. So, you know, the next is more, more features uh, on the job site where we're we, you know, we launched our native apps recently where we were, you know, mobile and web responsive prior to that. Um, so that's just kind of helped to tighten up the, the user experience and the journey as well and to provide more insights and more capabilities around tracking usage on our app and things like that as well. Um, and then longer term, Scott, we, you know, we obviously have, we have 500,000 workers on our platform today. Um, and, you know, they, they fill out a lot of information about what they're, you know, where they are, their trades, the projects that they're on, and that's all their information. So they own that information. And then the information that is pertinent to the site and that the company needs to collect, they get co-access to that information. Um, so what we have is a really big network of um, main construction companies or main contractors, subcontractors, um, subs of subs, and then workers in that kind of pyramid shape. Um, and so we're looking at opportunities to, um, to provide insights to companies who need to find certain types of workers in certain types of areas. So that's an area we're exploring. And so it's yeah. a good opportunity probably would be future round of, of, of funding to really fund that area of the business, but it's a good opportunity. And you know, we're looking to partner in those spaces as well. Uh, but then we've lots of opportunity to just impact the management of, of labor on sites as well. So um, okay. probably won't, won't share the detailed roadmap, but yeah, we're, we're busy. Yeah, yeah working fair enough. Yeah. Mid, mid and long range as well as, you know, that constant prioritization uh, on the short term stuff to really drive value for our customers. Nice. 
All right, so if we switch focus to customer acquisition channels, I'm guessing that organic would be the, the most um, useful channel for you guys. Uh, what do you reckon? Yeah, I mean, we have a direct, we have a direct uh, outbound sales force, obviously. Um, okay. You know, we're in, we're in an industry that's pretty face-to-face uh, -face oriented. That all changed in the pandemic. And so we had to get used to that. It was, it was a uh, you know, double-edged sword, right? So, you, you know, the industry got used to purchasing and, and procuring remotely, which was good. It's yeah. a little bit different for construction. Um, when you're at the project level or at that headquarter level and trying to get deals progressed. Um, but yeah, and so we do have quite a bit of you know inbound that comes through organic for sure we do spend as well through our, our inbound channels um you know do all the usual things around optimizing seo and just building yeah. a brand and we feel like we're in a pretty good spot on that we're really getting next stage there is into more of the intent marketing space i know that's something close to yourself um but we're sort of, yeah. <laughs> yeah we're investing in that space i'll have to sort of drop you up uh, a lead <laughs> after this um because we're assessing a couple of platforms there uh but yeah so that's that's really interesting for us but you know we've got you know sdr program we've got our aes doing outbound um because at this stage we're targeting a finite number of large companies at least in the us and then we're expanding more into the mid market which are smaller companies and so we're going more the um digital marketing route on on that on that one Okay. Uh, and then on the flip side, how do you approach reducing churn and retaining paying customers? Sorry, something popped up on my screen there and I missed that question. Can you, can you repeat that, Scott? Yeah. How do you approach reducing churn and retaining paying customers? So, I mean, once you've got a customer, do they usually stick around or is there a bit of churn in this business? Yeah, it's pretty solid, I would say. Um, we always want to drive that retention number up that, you know, gross revenue and net revenue retention number, um, extremely healthy net revenue retention numbers for the fact that, you know, we've sold to both enterprise and project level. And once you sell to project, there's lots of projects to keep selling on within construction. Um, and there's a balance there between the, I guess the, um, the, co the cost of the customer acquisition to the lifetime value and sort of there's an attraction to go towards enterprise sooner, but it's a longer sales cycle, a little bit more yeah. difficult. So we're trying to balance that with enterprise, mid-market and project sales in the vertical that we play in. Um, and so I think that's, you know, leading us to more a more consistent uh, space. So, you know, it's rarely about swinging from one to the other. It's about having a balanced approach usually, and then just keep doing more of what's working well. I mean, to answer your question on retention, you know, overspend on support, uh, have a really great onboarding program. Mm. Um, if, if, you know, handhold as much as you can in the early days, right? And I, I think, you know, you, you see that message out there, like don't worry about things that don't scale too early on. You just have to provide a really good customer experience because, you know, particularly in the industry we're in, these are big construction companies. If you mm. provide a poor experience, that, that word of mouth goes yeah. around really fast. And, you know, we, we get really strong word of mouth referrals for our platform and yep. the conversion rates really show where we're getting that word of mouth that they're, they're converting really quickly um, as opposed to, you know, reaching out and educating a customer on what you do. So mm. I think your, rep, your reputation is obviously seen through the eyes of, of your existing customers. So yep. doing things like measuring our NPS, picking up on any themes that are issues uh, where we take, you know, feedback and comments there and just constantly working on that. And it's really about, you know, it's automating Salesforce through to making sure account management have the insights they need to, to manage those, to manage those customers and, you know, segmenting so that you actually do have account managers. So you don't have hunters and farmers do it, you know, the same person doing both. We've, we've split right. that pretty early to make sure that we've dedicated staff and that they're adequately resourced. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Awesome. All right. So what would you say is the single biggest challenge that you're experiencing right now with growing Go Contractor? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, the single biggest challenge, I mean, it's, it's more lots of little things, I think. And I think with a startup, ah, okay. it's, 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 it's really about raising, raising your game across every function, assuming you're organized and, you know, you have, you're set up like that and, it's about, you know, you, you, 
you hire really good salespeople, so you better have really good lead generation. You have really good marketing to support that, and then making sure that you have the right the right pricing and that you're constantly relooking at that, and you're not just setting that once and leaving it. Because I think there's you know there's there's a lot to be uncovered there in terms of reducing friction and getting more traction and momentum on the sales side by lots of different things coming together. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean. The pandemic, I think, has been difficult. Like the, we, there was a sugar hit from the pandemic in the US for us, where obviously we kind of very quickly became a really high priority for people to implement. And then as it's dragged on, a little bit of that has waned just a small bit. And it's about kind of keeping that momentum and keeping the priority high. And so for us, it's, you know, getting, getting uh, you know, developers and engineers on to sort of keep that momentum and keep that velocity in terms of feature creation that is providing enough value for customers to jump in and continue doing that. And so I think on the buyer side, there's a bit of fatigue out there with, with assessing technology. And so I think it's breaking through that is a really key piece for us. Um, and okay. you really just have to be, you have to be in the top five, the top, you need to tick probably all three at least three of their top five strategic priorities within their business mm. to get any motion in that sales cycle. And it's not just about positioning and messaging. It's about that being matched properly and, and reaching out to the right personas and the right customers and getting that moving. So yeah, it's lots of little things, Scott, I couldn't probably just pinpoint one, but yeah. you know, I think it's been, it's been conscious of buyers out there that are getting pinged constantly with various different solutions and that perhaps have uh you know reached some level of a limit when it comes to just how much change they can handle and just being sensitive to that right it's not always the right time so mm. there's not always you know it's you don't always want to be going too hard on the sales side and, and basically nurturing those opportunities because they do come back around and that's what we've seen okay. we, we 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 will we will create a closed loss for an opportunity that's sitting there too long knowing that it's come, come back around just to kind of keep pipeline clean right, I see. um but essentially, it's it's having programs and nurture programs in there that can really supplement and do that. And then it's about having enough leads really and, and a wide enough market target that allows us to still hit still hit our targets while we're sort of being patient with some of those other customers that need to come around. Yeah. All right. So what would you say is your favorite business book? Yeah, gosh, what would I say is my favorite business book? Um there's a book called Traction that is just a really good general one. It sort of aggregates lots of different information. Gino Whitman. Gino, that's the one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I've sort got of, it, but I haven't read it yet. Yeah, it's you not, should read it. It's, on, it's, it's, it's really good stuff. And I think it's good for founders um, of businesses just to bring a bit of structure in where you know things can go a little bit haphazard in those early days. And it just helps to really, it's an easy to follow program that's common sense. And I think like, you know, I've done an MBA in my past and you study all these different business methodologies and programs and they usually are pretty similar, right? The foundational stuff yeah. is pretty good. And so it's about having a process and, and something that you can handle when you're trying to manage lots of other stuff. So this is a pretty easy to follow one. And it goes through everything from, you know, how you, how you, how you set your company values and how you hire against that and how you manage against that and retain against that. And so, you know, understanding what is, what are the core values of your business when you haven't consciously thought about that and what falls out of that is like, what culture have you really created? Is yeah, that a positive right. culture? And yeah. so the process there is really understanding, you know, with, with your management team, who are the best employees and why, and just like sort of listing all of those, throwing those at a board and it's, themes start to emerge and sort of, you know, um, values effectively come out at the bottom of that so it's a kind of interesting process that's early on in the kind of Gino Wickman um, methodology there and then probably the biggest one for us that's been really transformative has been making sure that every function um, and every manager has got key objectives every quarter so uh, okay. it's it's the notion of having rocks right you only have so much time um you can't just keep putting extra effort into something. You have to do things smarter. And so you have to prioritize, right? So it's about like, what are the three or four things that you can do in the next three months that are going to move the needle? Yeah. Um, and so what we try to do is say like, what are the key company objectives in the short term over that next three month period? 
And what it, what is each functional lead doing to contribute to that? So right now it's like, how do we really dial up conversion rates? And so it's from every function contributing to that. That's not a product or a sales thing. That's an everybody thing to say, how can we align the whole organization? And so, you know, for example, we've, we've been through planning for the quarter a few weeks ago and, you know, we've 33, what are effectively key initiatives um, for the quarter that are all attainable. Um, smart goals and projects that we're working towards that you know at the end of the quarter we've done all of those things we've vastly improved business in three months time and it's about those incremental gains so i think yeah. you know we, we tend to try and look for the silver bullet and the big things and, and there are those step changes in businesses but on a day-to-day you just really need to remain focused on doing things that are making a difference and not just staying busy because if it's all busy 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 pressure people burn out and that doesn't work Mm. and it's like it's never ending yeah awesome exactly yeah so so i think i think that there's lots of great business books out there but i think you know that one is just a great one to read it's a quick read as well you know it's graphical etc it's an easy program to follow and i think for anyone struggling with with managing the chaos and having too many things to do that'll just sort of help to bring some shape to that so perfect recommend it cool all right so just to wrap up uh where can people go to find out more about Go Contractor? Yeah, gocontractor.com. That's where you'll uh, find lots about us. We're uh, in a little startup battle at the moment, which uh, actually it might be over by the time you've published this podcast. That's probably not going to help. Um, but yeah, we've got lots of information on the website. You can find me on, on, on LinkedIn as well, John Norton. And uh, yeah, we're out, we're out and about. Our, our marketing team... They're a small team, but they do a terrific job in terms of representing our brand and, and getting our message out there. So yeah. I want to give a shout out to, to James and Zach uh, in that team that are just knocking it out of the park every day. Excellent. All right, better let you go. Thanks for being on the show, John. I really appreciate your time. That was awesome. Cheers, Scott. Yeah, that was great. Thank you.